again all, this is Dana here. In this video I'm actually just going to be showing you a few little tips and tricks that I have for those of you who might have an injury or might have some kind of uh, illness or something along those lines that's preventing you from potentially doing things that maybe you used to be able to do or now like say your hands start hurting after a certain amount of time or uh, in my case, I have a neck injury from military training, so I can't bend my neck very well. I can't use my upper body very well. So I'm going to show you a few little trips, uh, tricks that I've picked up uh, along the way and sort of taught myself some new ways of doing artwork and crafting and whatnot so that I still can create some things. So hopefully this will help those of you who either are having some issues themselves or maybe you know somebody who maybe has arthritis or things like that. <clears throat> And they're uh, having issues with not being able to do things like they used to be able to, which uh, obviously is a problem because most of the time these kind of crafts and art and whatnot make you feel better and it allows you to create something, which is pretty important in most people's lives, as well as being a great stress relief. So uh, as you can see on the screen here, this is my uh, cross stitch that I'm working on right now. Obviously I'm still working my way across it. This is actually, I can't really see it because it's rolled up. That's actually his knees... Here is arm coming across. In previous videos I have uh, unscrolled it, I won't do it right now. Uh, but this is one thing that I've actually found uh, really, really helps me as far as being able to still create things. I've learned that I can't do things like crochet and knitting anymore because I have to use my uh, shoulders and my arms a little bit too much. Just that repetitive motion actually really triggers pain in my neck. So uh, in this sense, what I'm doing is, uh, I'll show you again, I've shown this before, but it's got the little wooden frame on it. So that actually just sits on my lap. And that way I can, I'll just tilt the camera down a little bit. I can just put my hands underneath of it, put one hand under, one hand over, and just stitch. And I'm literally just moving my wrist like that to stitch. So I don't have to use my neck. I don't have to use my upper body at all. Uh, I've got it propped up high so that it can sit basically at my eye level so I don't have to crank my neck down. So cross stitch is something that I've learned that I can do. Uh, I can do it for quite long periods of time and it doesn't cause me any pain which is awesome because um, in a lot of my patterns I've actually translated some of my artwork into these patterns so it's another way of creating uh, but in a way that I can not hurt myself. Another thing that I've been experimenting with is um, I've had to kind of give up drawing and painting per se like on really big pieces because excuse me, <clears throat> of the fact that I can't use my shoulders very well, I can't use my arms very well, I can't make um, sort of swinging gestures with my arms very well. And I tended to like doing quite large pieces. Uh, and I you know, can't turn my head to look at my reference image. So what I'm going to show you here, I'll just zoom in a little bit. This is a really, really dainty little oil painting that I did. This is just an experiment, um, just to try out and see if I could do something. This is on this little tiny easel. Here. So what I was doing was I was actually setting this up. I've got a little uh, tray table thing that uh, my laptop sits on so it can angle my laptop at uh, basically eye level for me. And I basically sat this on that and then I was able to paint and I had my reference image basically right here. It was actually on my computer screen. It's a photograph I took. Uh, I was able to paint and basically not really do much of anything except move my wrists, which uh, didn't trigger my pain very much at all. Um, I'm used to doing quite large pieces and this one was interesting in the fact that I don't usually work so small uh, but it was neat in that I could actually do a painting and I didn't have to really worry about my neck hurting from twisting it to look at the reference images because the reference image was literally right next to it so I didn't have to um, turn my head really at all just had to move my eyes and then I could uh, paint this and not worry about moving my hand and my wrist too much. I still took some breaks and things like that. I just did a little, maybe a half an hour at a time, but this was my first time painting probably in about uh, seven years and definitely since I got injured three years ago. So that was a really good experiment and I, I have some more of these tiny little canvases so I may do some more paintings and such, but that was a good trial. Uh, before I tried that uh, actual oil painting, one thing that I did do that I've talked about in my blog a lot is I used a really neat um, app called Art Rage, and this is on my iPad, and I'm going to show it to you here. So here is my iPad here. So this is one of my paintings here, and I'll 
I've talked about this app a lot um, in my blog, and I've written a couple of uh, posts about like how I use it and all the settings and stuff. So I'll just open up the painting just so you can get a general idea of what it can do. But same again, like this one, and there's my reference image. So you can actually make that disappear if you want. You can hide it. Things like that. Yeah, so there's all kinds of really neat settings. You've got your color wheel here. You've got all of your different... Sorry if I keep moving this around. have got all your different tools here. And they're pretty accurate. Like, I'm pretty impressed, actually. you got all these settings. Uh, so for each tool, you have a lot of different settings. So you can actually make it look fairly realistic and fairly accurate. I've downloaded some of these images and printed them, and they actually come out really, really nice. Like, you can kind of see some of the paint texture in here from the, the way the, the app renders the paint and it actually kind of looks like a real painting which is quite cool. So yeah that's one thing that I've learned I can do and not hurt myself as well because the same thing I don't have to move my my neck I can basically uh, I've got this little folder here <clears throat> I can basically fold this over my knees I kind of fold it this way sorry it's hard to get the camera close enough uh, so I can fold it over my knee and then do my painting that way. So that way it's kind of upright at about eye level for me. And uh, as you can see, you can zoom in and zoom out. So you can um, get into as much detail as you need to do. You can actually uh, pre-program which size that you want this, uh, like the finished size, so to speak. Uh, basically, like the resolution it's going to end up as. So I don't have to really worry about... Uh, whether or not the, the you know the actual painting like say if I was doing a real painting at a real size like maybe this part over here in the top corner here maybe that's you know a good foot or two away from from this corner on the, uh, the actual painting so it would actually be a lot of arm movement particularly uh, if I'm working in one color all at once I'll be wanting to work across the painting itself all in that one color all at once so it's a lot of movement moving around the painting to get that one color done. Uh, in this sense, I don't have to do that because I can zoom in and zoom out. So I can literally, again, just use my wrist and and paint and draw. Uh, I've got a few different things that I paint with. I've got some little stylus things, like those little nubby stylus things. I've got one actually... Sorry, I keep moving my iPad all over the place. I've got this one actually attached to the headphone port. It's like this little tiny one here. A little stylus. It's basically the same kind of like little rubber tip you would see with any of the styluses that you can write with, but this one I can use for painting. And I've also got a couple of uh, capacitive brushes, which I will show you right here. I'm just going to put the iPad down so I can show you these better. So these are Nomad brushes. Uh, Nomad's the brand name, but I'm sure there are probably other brands out there as well. Uh, so this one brush here. I've got a little short stumpy one here. So th these basically these bristles act the same way that uh, this little tip does. It reacts with the screen and basically creates an electric charge. You can use your fingertips as well to paint. Um, I have long nails, so I mean it's a little bit trickier for me to do that and be accurate. But yeah, so you can get some pretty neat effects by using these capacitive brushes uh, or even just the normal stylus. So those are some of my tricks as far as uh, being able to still create, even though I do have this injury. If you have something like arthritis and you find certain movements are really quite painful for you, I'd suggest sort of uh, looking online and seeing what kind of other crafts and things might be out there for you. Maybe you're a knitter and um, because of the arthritis you can't knit anymore. Trust me, I know how hard it is to have to give something up, but I mean, there might be something like cross-stitch or painting or drawing or something, even if it's something you've never tried before and maybe you're not that skilled at right now. If you're creative and you want to do it, you'll figure out a way to do it. And uh, particularly things like drawing and painting, it's just practice. Like anybody literally can learn to draw and paint. It just takes a lot of time. Um, you have to want to put the time in to learn. Nobody's magically born, you know, knowing how to paint. It's just a lot of practice. Uh, so there's all kinds of different crafts, art forms, uh, sculpture, things like that that anybody can do. And you can actually work it around your limitations. So what I would suggest um, if you are considering taking something else up uh, in order to sort of alleviate pain or sort of work around pain, I'd suggest sort of thinking about what your current limitations are 
uh, whether you can maybe do things like work for shorter periods of time, uh, if that will help, uh, or take lots of breaks, or things like that, or whether you do actually need to change completely and pick up uh, a different craft or a different art form in order to not only express yourself, but to, you know, enjoy having a hobby again. I know personally how hard it was for me to give up uh, painting and drawing for a few years. I thought I wouldn't be able to do art again, and so I was really happy when I discovered the Art Rage app and I discovered uh, doing cross-stitch and, and rendering my images in a different media. So, I mean, there's so much you can do. There's so many different kinds of art and craft out there. It's just ridiculous. So uh, that's it for now. If you have any questions about this or maybe need some ideas about uh, what might work for you, please feel free to leave a comment uh, below and I'll see if I can come up with some genius ideas to help you get back into doing your art and your craft. That's it for now. Talk to you later. Bye.